For some of us, treats for our dogs are an afterthought. For others of us, we put as much thought and care into the treats we pick for our dogs as we do the foods we feed. Wherever you fall on the spectrum of treat purchasers, Sam from Bears Bites has some helpful tips for you. Sam founded Bears Bites when she struggled to find healthy treats for her dogs with food allergies. You may be in that same boat. All of our dogs deserve the best treats, but for those of us dealing with sensitivities and allergies, it's top of mind. Join us as we discuss why it's so important to source high quality treats for your pets and to find out what Sam's favorite human treat is. <coughs> Have you tried training methods that just didn't work? Do you feel that your pet is not getting his or her nutritional needs met? Are illnesses and bad behavior your daily norm? You're going to want to join me on the Pet Parenting Reset, where you'll hear interesting and informative interviews and get solutions to all your pet problems. I'm your host, Jessica L. Fisher. Sam, I'm so glad you're here. Thank you so much. Thanks for having me. <laughs> I, I I so appreciate you and um for being you, of course. But you know, it's so important for us, not just as small business owners, but as women small business owners, that we really, you know, have each other's backs and like promote the crap out of each other. <laughs> Because we, I mean, who else is going to do it, right? If we don't, so um, it's it's an important thing to me, and I'm finding I, I'm I by no means have you know a huge voice, but the bigger my voice does get, this is something that I want to do more and more of because um, it's just really like a a passion for me to be able to introduce people like you to, to the world, to, you know, to more and more people. Um, because it is, you know, when, when you have a passion project, which I know you're getting ready to tell me about, it's, it's about the love that goes into the product that you are not going to find when you just buy whatever at a big box store, you know? And it makes such a big difference, whether you believe in woo-woo or you don't believe in woo-woo, the energy that goes into making something can have a huge impact on us and our animals. And um, so tell me a little bit about Bears Bites, what it is you do, and how you got started. So uh, I'll give you a little bit of a backstory. So the reason I started making dog treats was my boys about 15 years ago had food allergies. So we had Sarge and Sarge started itching and digging and ear infections. And I took him to the vet and it wasn't real known back then with the food allergies like it is now. And he's like, I want to put him on this special diet. And it was, of course, science diet. I think it was ZD, hydrolyzed chicken. Mm. We thought he was allergic to chicken. And I'm like, are you sure? Oh, it's made different. And I'm like, okay, well, he was allergic to the chicken. So yeah. it didn't matter how it was made. He was allergic to chicken. So I took about six months and I started researching, reading books, talking to veterinarians and found out chicken was like the number one food allergy. So I got him on a food and there was like five on the market at the time. There's still the same five on the market that don't have chicken in them. No chicken fat, no chicken cartilage, nothing like that. And then we adopted Tank and Tank had these same food allergies, but his his were worse. Like his hair would fall out. He had yeah. sores on him, instant ear. He had horrible ear infections. So we got him on, and we had both of them tested for allergies. Sarge, he had the skin test and out of 30 things, he was allergic to 28. And Tank was allergic to nothing. So we did, we, yeah, we found out it was chicken by doing the elimination diet. Mm -hmm. And, um, got them on the food they were doing great and i went to find treats and all the treats had chicken and things that i can't pronounce so i was like mm, that's a hard no so i had one of those cute little white dehydrators and i was like all right i'll do organic banana and sweet potato and the boys loved it so uh, when we adopted bear i was so excited because i'm like oh he's a rescue dog he's gonna love these treats would not even eat them 
would not put sweet potato or banana in his mouth. So I found a farm locally that did hormone-free, steroid-free, organic meats, and we started making beef liver. And I told my husband it was, so we adopted Bear in March of 2017. So November 2000, see, 2017, I told my husband that I was going to start a dog treat company. And he looked at me like I was crazy, and I get that look often. <laughs> and uh, he said, what, do you know anything about starting a business? And I'm like, no. And I'd actually gone to school for business management. And still knew nothing about starting a business, by the way. And um, so I, he's like, when are you going to do this? They said, we're going to launch January 1st. And I got the, oh, Jesus, look. like the. And uh, we launched February 8th of 2018. And by June of 2018, it was supporting itself. So oh. that is, I knew if I was having the problem finding good treats, so was everybody else. Mm -hmm. So it was, it was time to launch and we have just grown, grown tremendously. Yeah, it is difficult. Um, it's getting less and less difficult. I mean, as you know, because <laughs> you're in the space, so you're seeing the growth in, in the treat space. But to me, I always recommend single ingredient treats like that is just my go-to. I don't, I, I just don't want to buy anything else and I don't want my clients to buy anything else. But one thing that I am realizing is that we have been, I, I feel like we have been so conditioned to not ask about where things come from that I am having to constantly remind myself when I see something new and shiny and I'm like, Oh yeah, look, it's a single ingredient treat. Mm -hmm. I'm, I have to remind myself to take a step back and say, Jessica, check the sourcing. Mm -hmm. And that is so important. And I know this has been part of your journey too. Can you tell me a little bit about why this is so important? It's that way you know, because, okay, so I actually, the farmer I started with, I did not go visit his farm at first, and he lied horribly. He didn't even grow half the meat. Oh, my when goodness. I started, I'm like, hey, I need to come visit the farm. He kept, no, 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 because I visit the farms that I work with because of the situation, because you, you can't just leave people anymore, and it's really sad, but... Mm -hmm. He never would let me visit the farm. And then I found out he didn't grow any of his pork. He buy his beef at market. Like there was, he did nothing. So when you have somebody that's saying, this is how it actually is grown. And then they don't grow any of it. That's, that's a serious problem for me. So now I visit all of them are, are all of my farms that we work with. That way we know, because if they're lying to you, you don't know what it is. You don't know what they fed it, how it's raised, if it's raised humanely, nothing. So that to me is very important because I want to know what I'm putting in my body. I sure want to know what goes in bears. I think bear eats better than we do. So because I'm more strict about what goes in bear's body. Mm -hmm. so that's, it's so serious to me because so many chemicals, like cancer is huge in pets because of all the crap that's put in the foods and everything. And they are horrible at sourcing anything. I, I have asked big companies, where, do, where do you get your meat? And they refuse to tell me. Yeah. That's a big red flag. Mm -hmm. Like <laughs> no thanks. <laughs> and, and the reality, at least for us in America is that most, I would say of our animals are raised um, on foods that are not ideal, that are not species appropriate, um, even even animals that graze, we want to be aware that, uh, you know, hopefully they're not be grazing in pasture that is being sprayed with, you know, glyphosate or, yes. um, and, and, and to your point about chicken, you know, our chickens that are raised in the U.S. for the most part are fed such horrible diets with corn, which is like the number one, if I, I know on one of my other podcasts, I think it was a solo podcast. If I could pick one, if I only could, like, there was one 
ingredient that I could say, stop everyone in the world, just stop eating it. It would be corn. Mm-hmm. Like it doesn't, it's something that I don't think we should be eating. Our animals definitely shouldn't be eating. The animals we eat definitely should not be eating. Right. Um, between, you know, GMO, it's, I don't even, I want to say it's like over 90% of corn in the U.S. is GMO crop. And um, the glyphosate and the aflatoxin and that like, we just don't want this. And that is one of the reasons why chicken is such a, a, a trigger for so many of, of our animals is just because of the poor quality. Um, and I really, really appreciate that you want these animals raised humanely as well. I don't know if you know this. My husband um, owns a food business. We have canned meats. And they're, um, they are for long-term food storage. So they're, the, the way we do it is we actually um, hand cut all of the meats, hand pack them in special, um, special containers, um, uh, my fever brain, <laughs> special, special jars, um, that the ball company makes for us. And they are, um, uh, uh, <laughs> canned like you would can at home. So they're, you know, a, a low heat, um, cooking and then, so they're sealed and then cooked. And so there's no living organism in the meat, but we're very, very aware of where our meats come from. And we only, um, you know, we, we can only participate in like what they're eating so much because they're such big farms, but we are very aware of, they have to be slaughtered humanely. Um, and, and so there's, there's, there's a lot to me in that, like, I don't want, I don't want to participate in a company that just doesn't care about, right. <laughs> you know, how the animals are treated because it matters so, so much. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, so the, the treats it, you have a line of, as you said, bananas, sweet potatoes. I know you do beef liver. Do you do any, any others right now? We do uh, bananas, sweet potato, pumpkin, beef liver, um, pork loin and chicken. And we have dehydrated and freeze dried. Wow. Yeah. So the, I know we were talking earlier, the freeze drying is, is such an expensive process to do. (laughs) Yeah. Um, so I very much appreciate as a small business that you're able to do that. I, I don't, you know, I like both. I like freeze dried. I like dehydrated. My dog does too. And it's funny that you said that, um, you know, one of your dogs just would not touch <laughs> the fruits and vegetables because that's exactly how my dog is. If it's not meat, she doesn't want it. <laughs> yeah. And that's how Bear is too. He, I thought, I'm like, oh, he's a rescue. Well, he really isn't. He was bought by a breeder or from a breeder and then turned over to the Dog Day Bordeaux Rescue. And he lived in a foster home. And then he came to us. So he never really was like, had to starve or anything like that, you know? So he came right to me pretty much being a little bougie. So <laughs> I'm okay with that. I just made it worse. It's it's funny how our animals turn out. Kim, our our dog Kim, we we found out after we adopted her, the rescue had her in a foster home, and there were quite a few animals, um, other dogs in the foster home. We got videos of her and stuff, and I want to say there were like ten or twelve other foster dogs in this small home in Mexico, and um, we found out later that the foster was getting the food and only keeping like just enough to feed all the animals and then selling the rest to, you know, people in Mexico because they have a hard time finding pet food down there. And, um, so we were just shocked, um, that she didn't have any food aggression. She doesn't have any food aggression. We were, we were just like, oh my goodness. Um, but knowing little things like that about where your animal comes from can, can really make a big difference. And, um, how we treat them, how we handle them. Because now, especially my husband, he is constantly just like, well, she was treated so poorly in the foster home. So he's like, oh, it's always an excuse to like give her more and more. <laughs> yeah. My husband's become quite a big softie over the years. And when we first got Bear, Bear really didn't like him much. So now Bear can do no wrong in daddy's eyes. Yeah. So he gets away with pretty much everything. 
Yeah. yeah. I understand. <laughs> <laughs> I love that though, because, um, you know, I, my husband was similar when I met him, he was like, I mean, they're just like, he liked dogs mm -hmm. and he had a dog, but it was like, you know, they have their space. I have my space. Like he didn't want the dog in the bed or, you know, anything. And I'm today it's like Kim is in our bed all the time. And <laughs> yeah. like we put in a pool for bear, a 15 by 30 above ground pool for bear. And wow. my husband's wanted one for years and bear has bad hips. So like bear was with us a couple of months and I came home and I'm like, babe, we're putting in a pool. And he's like, are, are you for real? Yeah. Yeah. I just bought it. Like, <laughs> Let's do this. <laughs> I bought it. Oh my goodness. And we swim all the time. And then we go on vacation for bear to swim. Oh my goodness. That's what the lake is for. Yeah. Like, we really wouldn't go to this place if it wasn't for bear. It's a great little place, but neither one of us swim in lakes. So, I mean, we wouldn't go there if it wasn't for bear. <laughs> I mean, it, it's a perfect little place, but I don't go into dirty water. I have a pool. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Well, I love that um, you do so much for your animals, and obviously this is why you started Bears Bites, and we're all so thankful that you did, uh, because like I was saying, it it can be difficult to source treats, just mm -hmm. like you said. Um, there are so many, even going in, so I, n I never, ever, like, I don't walk down the aisles, the pet food aisles <laughs> at the grocery store. I never walk into a Petco or a PetSmart anymore. And when I do for like filming content or whatever, I'm just like, what is this? <laughs> you walk in and it's like, I would not buy any of this. And I, I don't say that to make people that do feel bad, but you know, when you know better, you do better. Right. And when you know better and you walk in and you start turning those packages over and you read the labels, you're like, why? Like, why would I feed this to my animal? Uh -huh. And um, even, you know, there are treats that have no meat in them and that's okay. You know, some, some like you have the, the banana and the pumpkin uh, and, and that's, those are great treats. Um, fruits and vegetables can be really wonderful for, for our dogs. I think it's concerning that they're really starting to push um, plant-based foods and treats. Yeah. Um, that's, you know, we have, I have the, the pumpkin and the sweet potato and the banana for people who need like a lower carb or, you know, something like that. And pumpkin's great for the dogs anyway. So it, but it's that those are not my main source of treats. And I would never mm -hmm. tell somebody this, you know, don't give them meat, like meat. You right. need so much from the meat you know, I'm, I, yeah, I'm pretty shocked at the, the vegan diets for the dogs. Yeah. They're, they're really, um, irking me. <laughs> I guess I should say it's bothering me quite a bit. Um, because I, I just, our, our dogs are carnivores, right. And, and fruits and vegetables are such a small part and, and, and they can be very beneficial of course. Um, when we're, when we're talking about, um, plants as medicine, especially, right. but, um, I just really, I, I love, I love what you're doing. Where can people find bears bites? How can we, um, or, or even before you tell me where people can find them, because I know everybody wants to know by now when somebody is looking at a package of, of treats, can you kind of give me like a rundown of what it is you look for when you're looking at treats? When I'm looking at treats, first thing I go to is the ingredients. Yeah. <laughs> so, and ours actually is right on the front of the bag. I, I don't even have any to show you. Um, <laughs> but it's right. It, single ingredient is right on the front of the bag and then whatever is in it. And I have people flip the bag over all the time and they're reading. And I'm like, oh, so what are you looking for? Well, the <laughs> ingredients right there on the front. Oh, that's it. It, yeah, it's single ingredient. There's nothing else in it. So first thing I look for is the ingredients. So because if I can't pronounce it, I'm not eating it. So right. 
Yeah. And then, you know, certainly we never want to see dyes. No. Um, I uh, obviously I'm never, I'm never going to say this enough. I never want to see corn. <laughs> yeah. I, I don't even like seeing peanut butter because I want to know what's in the peanut butter. I, you know, peanuts are a huge source of aflatoxin as well. Yeah. And then what is it like? How is that? Is that peanut butter sweetened? How is it sweetened? Um, there's, there's so many things I don't want to see on, on a label, on a treat label for sure. Oh, my favorite um, one is natural. What is it? Natural flavoring. I asked a company that was at Super Zoo. I said, what's in that? And he's like, well, we've worked with doctors. No, no, no. What's in that? Mm -hmm. Like there's more in there than just natural flavoring. And he couldn't answer it. Well, they don't make you put those ingredients in there. Yeah, we I actually asked a lot of people that same question at Super Zoo this year. Um, I did have one company that I was relatively happy with the answer. Um, and then I did notice there are some companies that are starting to say what the natural flavoring is. Oh, and I think good. that's one of the good things that that we can start seeing. I think I, I want to say it was maybe a tiki cat or something. It said natural tuna flavor. So um, kind of going back to your point about sensitivities and allergies, if we don't know what that natural flavoring is, that could be a contributing factor because mm -hmm. we don't know what it's the na a natural flavoring of. Right. So if it is a natural flavoring of any sort of poultry and your animal has a, an allergy or a sensitivity to chicken, which is the most common, then that can be causing a huge problem in our animals. So definitely looking out for natural flavoring. I'm glad you brought that up. <laughs> yeah. And that's, so I have a lot of customers that ask me about allergies since that's mainly why we started our business was because my boys had allergies. And I always tell them if it says cartilage, if it says, you know, what is the other one that they stick in their um, fat, animal fat? <laughs> there's a good chance that's chicken. And, uh, you know, everybody said, well, it doesn't say that. I'm like, yeah, doesn't mm -hmm. have to. I'm like mm -hmm. call the company and ask them. Yeah. Yeah. Because it is such a big deal for our, our dogs that, you know, if chicken is an allergy or a sensitivity for them, we really need to avoid it across the board. Mm -hmm. Um, so even if it is in, like you were saying, the animal fat or, um, which is in almost every bag of kibble <laughs> because they're trying to entice your pet to eat something that's biologically inappropriate for them to eat. Um, yeah, I mean, you definitely don't want, and of course it could be restaurant grease too, which really, who yeah. knows what that is, but, um, yeah. There's many gross things that go into <laughs> I know, right? Um, but that's, again, why I appreciate single ingredient treats so much. It's pretty much the only thing I ever buy. Um, the, if if I buy a treat that has more than one ingredient, it's because it's like a, like a, you know, green lip muscle and green tripe or something like that. Right. But I'm not, I'm not buying like the majority of treats on the, on the market. I thought it was really interesting. I did a, a, um, a TikTok a couple of months ago and I went through target and I was just like, nope, 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 nope. Like why I'm not eating. No, I'm not buying any of this. Mm -hmm. I was actually shocked. I hadn't been down the pet aisles in target in years. And I just I felt this, I felt so gross, um, being in those aisles, but somebody actually commented and was like, you literally just said not to buy everything that's available to us. And I'm like, um, I am so sorry that you feel that way. This is absolutely not everything that is available to you. Like we need to like expand what we know about pet food and pet supplies. And it just made me so sad. Mm -hmm. I was like, it kind of brought me back down to like, people don't know. No. You know what I mean? Like people just no. don't know that they, they literally buy a hundred percent of their, their food, their pets food, their household items from a big box store, like a Walmart or a Target. And they don't know that things exist outside of it. And, um, so 
when there are products like yours out there, it's like, please, let's get this in front of people because if we can, whether somebody is starting with treats or they start with food and then find better treats, whichever way it is, like, let's get it in front of people. (laughs) And I find, so I do find here locally um, that we start with the treats and then the pet parents get to know me and they have questions or somebody told them to come ask me and I'm getting a lot of people not switching to raw, but putting more whole foods into their dog food. I'm like, look, you know, just throw, throw some stuff in there. Like you don't yeah. eat processed food all the time to your dog should neither. And I'm really getting locally here. I'm really getting people to start at least adding to it. So that's awesome. Makes me feel better. (laughs) Well, yeah, because, you know, I don't know about you, but literally every time I I just give somebody a piece of information and at some point, whether they come back to me or I just happen to see a status update on social media or whatever it is, and it's like their pet is doing better. It just makes me so happy. <laughs> yes, you and me both. Because it's like I hear a lot, my dog's itching, and the vets put them on Apoquil, but they're still itching. What do I do? What are you feeding them? That's mm-hmm. always my first question. What are you feeding them? Mm-hmm. Well, they said it's seasonal allergies. What are you feeding them? Mm-hmm. Because I can tell you here now with Sarge, he had seasonal allergies too until we got the food under control then he no longer had seasonal allergies. And I am also a prime example of that because two years ago, I found out I was a little, I have a food sensitivity to dairy and gluten. And when I eat either one of those things, my allergies just flare up something horrible. When I don't, I have no seasonal allergies. It is pretty crazy. And I, um, I have issues with dairy too. I'm actually looking at if I, if I do dairy, it has to be raw dairy. And that makes such a big difference. It's not easy to come by though. <laughs> right. I've never tried that. I just cut it out. Yeah. Because it's, they take out all the good stuff when they pasteurize it. Yeah. Just like with everything, you know, they, they want to keep us sick. <laughs> so I agree they, with that statement. Yeah. Very much. <laughs> As I'm sick right now, yeah. but, um, yeah, no, they want to keep us sick um, and they want to keep our pets sick. And I think it's so sad. So I I am so thankful for you um, for just taking a stand and saying no and putting a good product on the market. So now that I've said that, where can people find Bears Bites? <laughs> so you can buy them directly from us at bearsbites.net. We also, I am updating the list right now, so it's not on our website, but I'm updating the list of where you can find us in stores. Um, We are on places like walmart.com, which we do actually sell a lot on walmart.com. And so that's a good thing. It is, I'm out there a little bit. And then we're, we're working with another big company to put them online. I can't say that company yet, <laughs> but I did meet him at Super Zoo. Um, but it starts with a C. Um, <laughs> but it'll be on there. So I'm I'm getting out there. We're in about over 150 stores nationwide. A lot of smaller boutiques, grooming. Um, we really haven't looked at doing big chain stores because I find in the smaller boutiques and the grooming places that. The owners care mm-hmm. and they want to direct them more towards good things that they mm-hmm. carry. So I like dealing with small businesses too. So, yeah, well, I mean, when a big business, a big box store carries a product, they usually just throw it on the shelf. You know what I mean? And um, we are in a season, I think, where, uh, re-education is very important. Yes. So I, I also think that's why, you know, the smaller boutiques stores are, um, a great, a great place for products like yours because, um, people, people just need the education right now. Yeah. It's unavoidable. I think. (laughs) Yeah. No, I, I love that people are learning more. 
Yeah. So I'm thrilled that that you decided to join me today. Well, thank and you for me. the wonderful products that you are putting out. Um, I will absolutely be recommending <laughs> your products to everyone <laughs> I can. Um, and, you know, I, I just appreciate that you care enough to you know, care about the sourcing and, and uh, understand why that is so very important for our animals. Um, so thank you again. Is there any, Oh, I do have one more question for you actually. And I, I almost forgot because again, my, my favorite brain, but um, since we're talking about snacks uh, for our dogs, what is your favorite snack? <laughs> out of my treats or just out in general? You to eat? <laughs> I actually like freeze dried apples. So <laughs> Awesome. Freeze-dried apples and freeze-dried strawberries. That's why they're not on the list for the dog treats, because they never make it. I, <laughs> I have tried to get them out sometime. It doesn't happen. Oh, my goodness. That is so cute. Those yeah. are my favorites. Awesome. That's well, sadly Skittles, but Skittles is an addiction. I don't eat those very often. Yeah, we have to... Um, we have to really put our willpower to the test. <laughs> yes, <Sugars>. yes. <laughs> Sugars, I know. I, I'm really bad about it. Usually one time of the month, I'm like, but I want all the sugar. <laughs> yeah, I will go. I can go for six months without having anything other than natural sugars. And then mm -hmm. I'll be like out somewhere and I'll be starving. So I'll grab like Skittles or gummy bears. And then it's like, I have to detox off of them because yeah. it's, it's awful. The sugar addiction is real. Yes, for sure. I think it's worse than almost, I mean, it, the doctors say, you know, that it, it is worse than almost any other drug mm -hmm. out there. <laughs> and it's <laughs> oh, yes. Oh, yes. <laughs> Well, Sam, thank you so much. Uh, do you have any parting words for our listeners today? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> feed, feed real foods to your pets. Yes, please you know, know where your stuff comes from. Yes, it is so Ask. important. And if a company won't tell you, then there's a problem. Oh, very much so. Very much so. Uh, and so many of them don't want to tell you. Right. Uh, so, yeah, that is a big problem for me. So, um, I mean, I I'm normally glad. don't list every single farm when somebody asks me, but we work with local farms. And when I say local, I mean Midwest now because we went from our little local central Illinois to we try to stay in the Midwest. <laughs> so. Yeah, well, especially if you're visiting, you need to kind of keep it. <laughs> yeah. Keep it. Uh, manageable. Well, I'm, I'm so, I'm so glad that it was, you know, able to sustain itself so quickly. I think that's a testament to uh, where we're headed mm -hmm. uh, in the pet industry. And thank, I thank you again for everything you're doing. And I, I appreciate you. Make sure you go to bearsbites.net. Um, and if you are local to in the Midwest, then maybe you can find a cute little boutique store to buy them. Otherwise, you can get them directly from Bears Bites. Thank you so much for listening to today's episode. Make sure that you're following the show so you never miss an episode. And please take a moment to rate the show on your podcast app. I'd also love it if you'd share this podcast with your friends and family so that they can benefit from the information to help their pets live long, happy lives too. Don't forget to take advantage of this special discount as a listener today and get access to over 100 online videos and my online dog training, The Furry Family Coach. Just go to thefurryfamilycoach.com and use code PODCAST at checkout to get your first month for only $7. That's thefurryfamilycoach.com and use code PODCAST at checkout to get your first month for only $7. I can't wait to have you join and see you on the inside. Oh, oh, oh.